Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Welcome back to Ironclad RC. Today, we're actually going to be making a hatch from a hatch. <laughs> right. uh, we're gonna actually going to make a mold from this. Um, I've already waxed the hatch. I've got all the little imperfections worked out. Hope I hope I did anyway. And uh, I've got it waxed. I just used some turtle wax. I waxed it about five or six times. And now I'm actually using some PVA, polyvinyl alcohol. I actually put it in a spray bottle. I'll kind of spray it on there and use this really like smooth, like fine bristled brush to kind of spread it out. All right. And um, I'm letting it dry. And then we're going to go over it again. Um, on this part for the first application, I used a paper towel. You you can use a sprayer. So I actually went over this once with a, a damped PVA uh, paper towel. So there's no like uh, separation, just a light application. I'm going to let it dry about 30 minutes. I'm going to go over it again, you know. All right, so I got four coats of PVA, three and a half, four coats of uh, polyvinyl alcohol on the outside and on the hatch. I did have some areas that splotched. I think I'm getting those splotches because I used the turtle wax. If I use a recommended mold release wax before I apply the PVA, I shouldn't get these splotches. And that's one of the reasons why I brush mine on. I tried spraying it in the past with that turtle wax and it would splotch real bad so I used a brush so I can kind of brush those splotches out you know the best I can anyway so we're about to start the mold start laying down the the fiberglass cloth and epoxy to make our mold I've done it in the past with with success you could start your mold one of two ways uh, you can use red or I guess it's orange orange tooling gel coat it's supposed to be a really hard um, outer layer for the inside of your mold um supposed to res like resist chipping and cracking but mine cracked i think it was because i used too much hardener probably is why i used too much hardener it, it cured too fast and over time it actually started cracking okay so i'm not going to use this again i may in the future but for this it's just a quick hatch and uh, I'll probably only pull a few hatches from it. So I'm actually going to use what you call veil for my first coat on my plug to make my mold. This is a fiberglass veil. It's really thin, almost like paper thin. And it conforms over all the curves and crevices probably do like one and a half coats build up around these hard corners and hard edges with the veil um, I did this mold right here with the veil I also brushed my PVA on with this mold so you can actually see the the brush stroke well in here that's the wood grain but you can see the brush strokes in my mold you're supposed to spray it on I'm a hobbyist I'm just gonna I just brush it on. It's just easier for me. Try not to leave big brush strokes on this one. So we will have some imperfections. We'll have to sand the final part. But using fiberglass and epoxy to make this mold, it didn't chip or crack. So this is the way I'm going to go. Let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to get some uh, laminating resin mixed up. A slow cure resin. Laminating style resins is best because we're going to be laminating the fiberglass onto the plug so it's actually a good idea to go ahead and tear your veil to put on your on your your plug i may actually put this on let it halfway cure and then come in with my my wove and chop strand uh half cure while it's still tacky so we don't have to sand it you know using a, a softer bristled brush i have actually used a, a hard bristle and was brushing my epoxy on this PVA in the past and the hard bristle broke through that PVA barrier so 
maybe maybe get you a soft bristle brush for this very first application after that you can kind of go ham on it you know Got everything laid down there's no air bubbles or there shouldn't be any air bubbles on the hatch I'm working it on it still uh, the edges have you know air bubbles this wood over here that's okay we're gonna be peeling this off and cutting that part off so I'm gonna take my last few pieces here and just go over the whole thing again okay so I got the veil laid down I used it all I ended up tearing it into little pieces and I put it all the way around especially right here on the inside building that up trying to round it so it wouldn't be so hard of a transition whenever I put the heavier fabrics down all the way around uh, looks like I have an air bubble but it's not it's the adhesive I used to glue the hatch down uh, around here I went around it twice these I went three times uh, the whole thing's done tw two layers uh, some areas is three you know um, yep it's all tacky, so I'm going to let it cure out to about 80%. Still tacky, but I can touch it and um, basically put my next layer down without having to sand. It's still tacky, you know. Um, I waited till now because if I were to have done it while it was wet, I may like put an air put bubble or something in it. You got to remember, this is the very first layer the top layer in your mold you know the first layer is the top layer so as long as you can get this one down with no air bubbles or imperfections the the inside of your mold should be pretty good you know what i mean uh now we're just building up thickness you know so it don't like this form or crack or break when you go to pull it off and it'll last through several part pulls like this one here I, I used some scrap carbon fiber I had laying around and it's tough you know what I mean it's tough so um, yeah I think I'm gonna go ahead and use I was considering tearing this and doing like a bunch of small pieces of that chopped strand but I think I'm gonna use this All right, so I'm going to have to let this completely cure out because I've got a couple places that I had to cut it and the hairs are like scraggly and they probably won't lay down when I put another layer on. So I'm going to have to let it cure out. I, think I also have a little air pocket here and here that I'm going to have to grind into and fill. all right so i did um i did two layers of veil two layers of wove mat and one layer of the chop strand all right so we're going to go ahead and pull it turned out pretty good should be thick enough I, i'm only pulling like one hatch from this mold you know maybe two and i didn't see the need of of, of using the orange tooling gel coat on the inside of it you know uh it's it's uh it's just for one hatch man i'm not making this mold to mass produce and sell thousands of hatches 
You know what I mean? So I, I just went bare material. I went as thin as I could, not to waste too much epoxy resin. And I, um, it's just, <laughs> like I said, it's just for one freaking part pool. So basically put you, put you a, a screwdriver or something up under there, a couple a wedge is actually best probably gonna peel this hatch off the wood more than likely gonna peel the hatch off the wood but we'll get it hope not looks like we did and we did that sucks <sighs> Kinda wish I didn't do that. Ooh, I think it just popped out. So let's check her out here. Oh, nice. All right, my hatch is still kinda in one piece. Ooh, looks good, man looks good got a couple little dimples because my my plug the original hatch it was not perfect to start with you know i had like lots and lots of imperfections you gotta see where i had to sand it so i knew that my mold wasn't going to be perfect that's why i didn't want to spend them extra money on the tooling gel coat So I'm actually super duper happy with the outcome. It's not a perfect mold, but I did want to, um, I, I needed a hatch and that boat's not doing me any good without a hatch. So, uh, you know, I, I, I worked on this, uh, the original hatch, I had to do a lot of sanding and fairing and filling to make this hatch one piece again. Uh, and it worked so you could see how it just glued i used some old dried up whatever i had laying around adhesive sealant it was like household caulking type stuff and this old piece of veneer it, it just so happened to the bow on this piece of wood fit the hatch perfect so i used it like i said i used modeling clay to fill it fill in any gaps and you just peel that off you know um the, the actual layup took, I mean, well, <clears throat> I think I have about eight hours into this. Start to finish till now. Start to now. Sanding, prepping it, laying out the epoxy and fiberglass. About, yeah, about eight hours, you know. <clears throat> it's not a perfect mold. I, I, you know, you can actually see some of the, the low or high spots on that where I had to fill in because that piece was completely missing and and uh working plastic to epoxy fiberglass it's not easy and I'm actually lucky I got it to look the way I did it turned out all right so I'll have some finished work to do on the final hatch but I'm okay with that like around this it came out perfect this one on the other hand it's got like a little air bubble like right here on this side and then a couple on that side but this part right here turned out good you know all that turned out good on these hard edges it's kind of it was it's kind of yeah 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 so what i'll do i'll probably on this i'll probably hit it with some sandpaper like real light grit sandpaper just to kind of finish it off there's little voids i could take some epoxy and, and fill it in but i'm not I, I'm going to just lay my hatch out and then I'll do all the final finish work on my new hatch. I think I'm going to make a fiberglass hatch. I don't think I'm going to use a carbon fiber. Definitely not because trying to get carbon fiber to conform to these hard lines, it's going to be tough. 
without a vacuum bagger. And I'm not spending the money. I'm not going. I'm using what I got. So it is what it is. I'm ex actually pretty excited and happy with the with the result. Really don't see the brush marks all that bad. If you do it right, um, I used some rubbing alcohol. Once it dried, I, I went over it with rubbing alcohol, and that kind of laid down some of the brush marks. You know, not too bad. I'll take it. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.